Hey, it's Joel. The time is finally here. It's like Christmas in, what month is it? Is it May? It's it, May, right? I think so, yeah, It yeah, was yeah. March forever. It's <laughs> now May. It's like Christmas in May. It's the CR6 SE from Creality. Their long-awaited successor to other machines that they've made. It's just really exciting. There's a lot of really cool stuff in this box. I know Naomi covered it, but I'm about to cover it. We're gonna do it right here. We're gonna get this box open and print with it. Right here on 3D Printing Nerd. Welcome back. So with this box right here, the goal of, well, the goal of this entire episode is just to get this out of the box, prove it prints, and then to ask you for suggestions on what I should print on this machine for the review. I think that's fair. We have the Evan and Caitlin knife. Sean, do you remember when I got this? It was at Bay Area Maker Bay Fair. Area, it's right. Yeah, yeah. We that's may have the right. footage somewhere. Probably. I'm not going to find it. I'm not going to find it either. But Evan and Caitlin, thank you again for this wonderful knife that unboxes so many wonderful things. So I'm told, per Creality, that the hardware in this box is most likely final. Software is subject to change. I know that uh, someone mentioned on their Kickstarter, I think it was Keith, that um, they were looking for people to help contribute to the development of this machine. Uh, hardware is most likely final. Software is still to be changed or distributed or determined or something. TBD. TBD. But look at this. This is a great presentation. Can you see that? Yeah? Yeah, look at that. This is fantastic. Okay, well, let's. I cut myself. Did you Literally, cut yourself? A paper cut. Uh. Cardboard is dangerous. Inside, we have, first of all, I'm going to guess this is filament. It looks like filament. That looks I can, very filament. I can kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. see blue, through that. Bluish. I can't see through that. You like blue. Um, after sales service card. Thank you. There's a manual, but as Tom would do. <laughs> oh, is that what you want? Yep. Because that's how you get ants. Look at this. This is a touch screen. So what's really cool about the CR6 SE is it comes with a touch screen. So I'm excited to get that plugged in and working. This, honestly, I mean, technological achievements aside, one of the coolest things I'm looking forward to using is the spool holder because when it attaches, <laughs> it rotates and moves into place. You can have it on the side or the back. Uh, I'm just excited about that. That's fun. Okay, so level one of the styrofoam has been... Oh, wait. I heard something metal. Oh, okay, parts from the spool holder. Okay. That's good. Oh, look at that. So inside, um, the machine is packaged very well. The foam on the inside is really keeping everything safe. Uh, US power cord, that's handy, that's for sure. So typically with these sort of machines, the, the gantry is packaged right above the base unit, and this is no exception. Here is the CR6SE uh, gantry system. And one of the big things, here it is, that people are looking forward to is this. This is using an FSR, or uh, force-sensitive sense res force resistance. Force-sensitive? Can it use the force? Stop it, Qui-Gon. But this is using an FSR, which is similar to the CME CNC Artemis for leveling. It'll actually touch the nozzle to the surface of the bed, and then there's a certain amount of resistance that it expects, and once it hits that, it knows where the bottom of the bed is, and it's able to do leveling that way. It's got a nice, bright LED right under here. Oh, nice. That's kind of cool. Yeah. I'll set that aside. Uh, oh, this is the base. I mean, you know I'm all about that base. This, uh... This has got some heft to it. This feels heavy. That base is solid. This is, I, I'm excited about this. Okay, well, I'm gonna put that right there just for now. Okay, so in the box, we're good. Wait, there should be a bag of parts, right? Somewhere. Cause that is gonna screw in. You need some screws. Right, right here. Did I toss screws? I feel really bad now if I did. There's nothing in there. Oh no! A few moments later. Like, is there a secret compartment? <laughs> <laughs> there is one! Oh no way! No way! No way. <laughs> no way! No way! Okay, so. Uh, within the base of the machine is this drawer 
that keeps all of your parts. And I'm gonna be honest with you, it may have said that in the instruction booklet. It may have. It doesn't mention the drawer. Interesting. Mm -mm. It doesn't mention the drawer. Well, wait, wait. Yeah. It doesn't mention it. Like, like the, the drawer that, that's right there with the handle, there is no number pointing to it. You know, it's really, it's awesome that it's there though, right? Because that, that you can hold your tools. Well, here's where it gets interesting. Because if you have a 3D printer, typically it comes with a bag of goodies. And sometimes it's a, a zipper bag that the goodies fit in, or sometimes it's like a Ziploc baggie that the, that the tools and the, the goodies fit in. But this is great because it's easily stored in the printer. And if you, if you look at it, do you see that? Look at that. It's got like everything, everything. Well, I'm just gonna take all the tools out. I mean, look at, look at that. I've got, look what fit in there. No joke, all of this fit in there. Wow. And custom cut foam. Wow. That's like, great. like, that's great. Okay, so I'll get this machine put together. Uh, very familiar. It's got one, two, three, four giant screws with washers, and that's going to connect the, uh, the towers into here. Uh, one, two, three, four. These are screws that probably maybe hold a spool holder or, oh, the touch screen. I got to hold the touch screen. And then it's got uh, a, a few T nuts. So, there's plenty there. All right, I'll get, uh, I'll at least get the towers installed and then, we'll and then we should be do. good, yeah. A couple of things I want to highlight because I've got the towers assembled and I've got the bolts in, but Preston said it was on its side and Preston said, careful, you're going to hit that belt tensioner. And I was like, belt tensioner, belt tensioner. So there's injection molded belt tensioners on X and Y built in. So you don't have to adjust via a screw or a bolt. You just, you just turn a knob. I think that's great. Also, there's this new extruder back here. So I believe how this works, and again, this is just first blush, but you put in the filament in the filament sensor, and it comes through the extruder, and then this disengages it. Once you're ready to engage it, you flip the lever and it locks into place. So you're not pinching or squishing something to disengage the extruder. What you're doing is you're unlocking it, and when you're ready, you're then locking it into place. And I find that to be fascinating. I think that's an incredible way of doing an extruder and if it works out, awesome. Look at this, here's the bed. So uh, talk about strain relief on the bed wires. Look at that. Oh, look at that, yeah. This is fantastic right here. I'm finding a lot of really good stuff on this. I'm gonna be honest with you. So one of the things I wanna point out, uh, a lot of times there are chances for this bed wire to get obstructed or impacted or, or uh, accidentally clip onto something when it's moving. Um, I've seen a few printers with that. The bed wires come out of here, they're wrapped up nice, and then they come into the strain relief, so there is no chance for the bed wire to get impacted by anything. And then on the side here, the wires that power X and the extrusion, they're, they're nice off to the side. They just sit there, they plug in, they're locked into place here, and uh, they're good. I think that's, that's fantastic. So as the gantry goes up and down, it'll be, it'll be just fine. A lot of injection molded on this, un injection molded plastic on this machine. Ooh, and. Oh, would you look at that? <laughs> uh, I'm just gonna remove this. Oops. Ooh, don't break Oops. it, jeez. It's, I'm testing it. Like, uh. Rude. So this, uh, this has a very any cubic ultra base kind of feel to it. I was gonna say, I bet you that's I very ultra basey. Uh, I haven't played with a lot of latest generation Creality machines, but I get the feeling this isn't on them. This seems new. There's two little uh, spots that you push it back to. So look at that. They lock the bed into place. Nice. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So it's got, um, what is that, optical end stops, right? Yeah, so I have to plug that in. Oh, hold on. 
So it looks like there's two wires on the right, one on the left. And if you look here, there's two on the right, one on the left. Yeah, 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 yeah. So far the build has gone exceptionally well. I mean, other than the well-placed drawer that I missed, honestly, uh, I'm excited about this. So let's make sure the voltage switch is set correctly. That'd be great. It is set to 230. We don't want it's that. It's now set to 115, but look, 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 look. It's in the back. It's right there. It's easily visible and it's super easy to switch. Ready, ready? No. I got it first try. Nice. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, let's see. I'm going to tilt it up. Ready? Ready? Oh, yeah. <laughs> nice. Look at that progress bar go. All right. So the extruders right here, or the extruders here, the filament sensor is right here. So this is going to go on here. And I, I just, okay. Look at this, this design. It's injection molded and it's meant to fit into the extrusion itself. Let's see. Does it just snap in? No. Yes. Yeah. And then look at this. It's got a little foot right there. So it's not actually hanging off the extrusion. It's it's sitting right there. That's great. Yeah, 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 yeah. This comes with a handle. What? I kid you not. Nuts. I'm not gonna put the handle on yet. I mean, I, I will at some point. Yeah, sure, sure. Just the look of this machine and how it went together and how rigid it feels. I can imagine a farm of these. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, easily a farm of these. Okay, this is, this is there. So let's see, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna start the leveling process. Level. Okay, it says level right there. Yep. It says, wait for the nozzle temp Temperature to heat up to 120C and start the leveling. Okay. So there's a grid here and there are 16 points on the grid. So it does a four by four grid. And the one is in the corner over here. My guess is it's gonna establish Z in the center right. and then move over to, to one and go to town. Cause it's actually touching the nozzle to the build plate. Wow. Yeah, you can see it. It just barely touches the build plate. This touchscreen is really cool, honestly. Oh, look at the, L okay, the LED, look, look, look. Do you see it? Oh, yeah. It's a, oh, it's a blue LED. It's blue. It's blue. So, uh, filament goes in right here. There we go. Look at that, feeding it through. Nice. And then if you lock it into place. It won't go. It doesn't go. Nice. Ugh, bringing it around. Okay. We we'll probably have to insert the SD card. That would help. Yep. Oh, right there. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, oh, 10 by 10 by 50? 50, 250, 10 by 10 by 250. I'm gonna do 10 by 10 by 50. Okay, so look, I just hit print on that thing. So it's bringing the nozzle to 200C. It's setting the bed at 40C, which is low for PLA. Yeah, just put it right there. Look at the green they tested with. Ooh, it's moving. Okay, what's it gonna do? There it goes. If it sticks, I mean, I'm fine with it. And it's laying down a beautiful line. Wow! I mean, there's a little bit of ooze that's left over in there, which you could get rid of with like a wipe line or something. It looks like it's going to print a cube. Yep. It's so quiet. Yeah. Other than the fan, I don't I, I hear can't, it. I, I, other than I cooling. Don't. Yeah. I really like that the spool holder has been removed from the top of the gantry. Because if you have weight up here and it shifts back and forth, that can introduce inconsistencies in right. the extrusion. Off to the side, you're just kind of removing that, which I think is good. Plus, if you're not using it, you can tuck it out of the way. But when would you ever not be using it? <laughs> it's 14% done. I'll be back in 86%. Eventually. So according to this, the print time was 20 minutes and it does say finish print, which uh, ended print time in 20 minutes, 10 by 10 by 50. So it looks like this was a tall square column, 10 millimeters by 10 millimeters by 50 millimeters tall. And we, I'm gonna be honest with you, the three of us were watching it print and we were stunned, absolutely stunned by how quiet this was and we were doing the research 
And it looks like on the Kickstarter, I was able to find out they are using Trinamic drivers, which makes sense because those are quieter. Uh, also, it looks like early bird pricing on the Kickstarter is $319 or $319 US equivalent. Um, I don't want to get into the hype of Kickstarter. And I know there's a big discussion whether or not Creality should have used Kickstarter for this. I honestly go have that discussion, be fruitful in your endeavors. That's great, but I just, I want to look at a machine. I want to evaluate the hardware and the software and I want to tell you whether or not it's working well. And according to this very single print, look at that, it just comes right off. I mean, it looks good. It looks great. I think it looks pretty good. And it wasn't vase mode. Sean actually said it looks like vase mode. I said, no, there's a little point that as the nozzle went around, it did a, a wipe or a coast and it uh, established each individual layer. And then it, uh, it bridged across the top and that looks pretty good right there. So look, look at this. We have a handy dandy handle, which I did install on a machine that according to my excitement, is a force to be reckoned with. I mean, this is cool, right? The the feature set that's on the CR6 SE, I think is valuable for the 3D printing community today. I think that what most people are looking for is reliability and robustness and the ability for a machine to produce practical things that they can then use around the house or possibly sell outright, uh, you know, via Etsy or Gumroad or something like that. I think that what this machine is trying to offer is that. It doesn't have the largest build volume. It's, what do we say, 235, 235, 250, right? Yep. And at that point, we're very typical build volume range. The nozzle, it says, is 216 below, so we know it's not an all-metal hot end, so we're not going to get to 300C. But 260C is going to have uh, plenty of filaments to, to print with it. Um, the feature set is great. I think that... I think that Creality may have itself a winner with this CR6 SE, but with all winners, we have to prove that they can win. So this is where I reach out to you. The goal of this episode was just to get it out of the box, to show you what was offered, make sure that um, you now know about the drawer, because I know about that, and then find out if it works. And it did, it worked. We were able to get this thing printing and printing, it looked like pretty well. So now it's up to you. I would love to hear what you want me to print with this machine for a review. There will be a link in the description. Go to that link and it'll be a Google form where you can submit links for me to print. Uh, obviously leave a comment down below just because th that's cool too. And I really appreciate that. But listen, this is, this is new, this is exciting, and I'm glad I was able to show it to you. A big thanks to Preston and Sean for helping out with this. And I look forward to seeing you on further episodes with cool things printed with this. But hey, you know what? If you made it this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more. We'll see you soon. And from a safe distance, high five.